Hello everyone, my name is Taylor. I am a single mother who went through a lot of hardships to raise my son Eric. Many single mothers out there have supportive families. I thought I had one too. Turns out I was wrong and I found out the worst way possible. Thankfully, I was able to get back at the people who tried to mess up my and my son's life. My ex-husband Carl is an abusive crap. The very thought of him fills me with disgust. There was a time when I was head over heels in love with him. Things went downhill after I married him. Carl was a great boyfriend, but as a husband, he was a nightmare. He was controlling and slowly started to become abusive. I stayed in that marriage for over eight years. It was mostly because he had manipulated me and baby trapped me into being with him. At first, I thought that my son deserved a father, so I didn't leave. However, things took a turn for the worst. One day when Eric was five, Carl started to hit me very hard. My poor son saw me in pain and tried to stop his dad from beating me. Carl was so deep in anger that he ended up pushing Eric to the floor. That's what it took for me to leave him. One call to CPS and the police was enough to keep Carl away. However, he was determined to get back at me. He said, you think you can run away from me, Taylor? That will never happen. Sooner or later, I will have you and my son back in my house. You just wait and watch. We are getting a divorce, Carl. There is no way in hell that I will allow you near me and my son again. Even if we divorce, I'll find a way to take Eric. I am his dad and I have rights. He will be in my home and so will you. Mark my words. Carl's behavior and his violent history made me very paranoid. My son was extremely traumatized and had to go to therapy to deal with his issues. A long court battle later, me and Carl were finally divorced. I didn't end things there. I literally moved away near my parents and sister to be safe from Carl. I even got restraining orders against him. It was the most horrific time of my life. Carl never knew where I had moved. He could have guessed, but he didn't have my exact address. Being near my parents and sister made me feel safe. However, my parents were not really that supportive of my divorce. They said, was it really necessary to get a divorce? You two could have attended therapy and talked it out. It's not a big deal. Yeah, poor little Eric had to lose his dad over your problems. That's so unfair. He must be devastated not being able to see his dad. Are you serious right now? Carl used to beat me up, Mom, and he had put his hands on Eric as well. My son was only trying to protect me. How can you not see what a monster Carl is? Mom, Dad, you two need to be a little sympathetic about Taylor. She has been through a lot. You have no right to make her feel guilty. She did the right thing. But first, Mom and Dad used to try and talk to me about letting Eric see his dad. However, I never allowed it. My parents were never happy with my logic. They always said, why don't you let Carl visit Eric? He must miss his son. How would you feel if I wasn't around when you were growing up? I know I would have been devastated. Taylor, you lived and prospered in a household with two parents. You can't be so selfish with Eric. He deserves the love of his father. Soon he will start resenting you for not allowing his father to stay in his life. What are you even talking about? Eric is absolutely scared of his dad. He begs me not to go near him again. He has no intentions of ever seeing his dad again. And neither do I. You must be influenced by all the violent stories you have told about Carl. You should have not dragged Eric into your issues. He learned to be afraid of Carl from you. That is ridiculous, Dad. If Carl was such a good man and a loving father, he wouldn't have hit me in front of him. In fact, he should not have hit me at all. No matter how hard I tried, they would never agree with my decision. However, as time passed, they seemed to have accepted my decision. They were very close to Eric and were doing a great job being good grandparents. Eric also developed a close connection with them and with his aunt Blair. I think part of the reason my parents stopped pushing me was the fact that I was financially helping them. Me and Blair sent monthly allowances to our parents because dad doesn't have a good job while mom doesn't work. 
Money might have been a reason why my parents eventually went silent about the matter. Me and Eric were thriving in our new home. Eric joined a local school while I was working a good job in an office. Things were going great and I was happy surrounded by family. However, I had no idea that my loved ones could be so horrible to me. My second biggest betrayal in life happened just a year after I left Carl. I was all set to go on a business trip to another city. I couldn't take Eric because there was no provisions to keep children at work. So I was in a rut, wondering what to do with Eric. That's when my mom and dad suggested the plan. They said, so I heard you will be leaving for a business trip soon. Me and Stuart have been thinking about babysitting Eric for you. We can stay back at your house and take care of both Eric and the house. Are you sure about this? I mean, Eric can be a little handful. Plus, you will be leaving your apartment empty. Wouldn't it be a hassle? It's only a matter of days, so I don't think it will be much trouble. Plus, we love Eric and he loves us too. I'm sure you will be thrilled to spend these days in our care. Yeah, the two of us can stay here and babysit for you. Your house will also be safe when you go on this trip. It's like you will get two benefits in one. Okay, if you are insisting so much, I will leave Eric and my house with you too. I agreed to let them babysit Eric and stay at my house until I came back. I was feeling pretty satisfied with the arrangements since I trusted my parents blindly. I now know that I made a huge mistake. I shouldn't have trusted my parents at all. My business trip happened only a week later. I flew out at night after kissing Eric goodnight. I had to leave a day earlier to prepare for a meeting with big clients the next morning. I called my parents and Eric after reaching the hotel. Everything appeared to be normal. However, I had no idea what was going to happen at night. When I was in my hotel preparing for my meeting for the next day, I got a call from Blair. For some reason, it made me a little panicky. I thought something was wrong at the house. I picked up the call, feeling nervous. Blair said, Hey, Taylor, have you already flown out for your business trip? Yes, Blair. I came here yesterday. I had a late night flight. It won't be a very long trip. Have you left Eric with our parents, Taylor? Yes. What's wrong? They are staying at my house with Eric. They take such good care of him, and he loves to be around them. Taylor, I don't know how to say this, but I think you made a mistake. You should not have left Eric with our parents. They are planning something, and I don't think you will like it. What do you mean? Tell me everything right now. You're scaring me. Taylor, I think Mom and Dad will try to make Eric meet with Carl. They've been against your decision to take out the restraining orders. You know how they hate it, your divorce and everything. I have a bad feeling they will take Eric to Carl. What the hell are you saying? No, no, no. Mom and Dad can't do that. I'm sure there has been some misunderstanding. They didn't approve of the divorce, but they weren't siding with an abuser. I know you trust them a lot, but you need to be careful. If you need anything, I'm right here. I want you to remember that. Thanks, Blair. I'll be careful. Don't worry. Honestly speaking, Blair's words were ringing in my head. It did make me very uneasy, so I decided to call my parents and check up with them. I said, Hey, Mom, can you hand over the phone to Eric? I want to talk to him a little. I'm missing him a lot. I can understand, Taylor. Hold on. I'll put him on the phone. Mom, are you there? Hi, Eric. I'm just checking up on you. Is everything okay? Are you having a good time? Mom, I need to tell you something. Grandma and Grandpa have called Dad. Oh my God, my phone is about to die. I'm so sorry, Taylor. Now I have to put it on charge. Why don't you call back later? Eric is fine and playing with us. You don't have to worry about anything. Take care. Bye. Something made me really suspicious about the way Eric tried to talk to me. What was worse was the fact that Mum snatched away the foam and didn't let Eric complete his words. My head was reeling from the situation, so I decided to check the security camera footage. 
I didn't have any cameras in the house, but I did have them outside. Lo and behold, in my driveway was my freaking ex-husband's car. I was shocked. I remembered the footage and saw the car was in my house. My freaking mom opened the door for him. After looking at the footage, I was immediately enraged. I was also scared for Eric and my own life. Carl was not supposed to have my address. Hell, I have a restraining order filed against him. He should not have been around my son. I was furious and called my parents straight away. Don't worry, I also recorded the call, I said. Mom, why the hell is Carl at my house? What the hell is going on? Who permitted you to let him in? God, you need to relax, Taylor. Carl is not here. Why would you even say such a thing? Mom, I can see his car parked in my driveway. Did you forget that I have security cameras outside? I freaking saw you open the door for him. For a while, there was a pin drop silence on their side. Neither of them spoke a word to me. I could tell that I had made them nervous. However, nothing had prepared me for what happened next. Look, I know you're upset at Carl and us, but you're being very unreasonable. You need to cut us some slack. Yes, I'm very disappointed in you, Taylor. You cannot separate a son from his father. Eric needs Carl in his life. You're not being a good mom. Please tell me you are joking. Carl literally abused me physically. Hell, he even hit Eric when he tried to save me. How can you allow Carl back into his life again? I have a restraining order against him, for God's sake. That was a long time ago, Taylor. We must forgive people. He has changed. Your stupid restraining order was causing a lot of problems. Yes, so I and your mum decided to take matters into our own hands. We gave Carly our dress since you won't. We reunited father and son. They are so happy together. Mom, Dad, I will give you exactly five minutes to kick Carl out to the curb. If you don't, there will be consequences. Don't threaten us, Taylor. We are your parents. You are 3,000 miles away. Carl will stay here as long as he wants. We are planning a picnic tomorrow. Now I am hanging out before you talk any more nonsense. Mom said that and simply hung up on me. I literally gave them five minutes to kick Carl out. When five minutes passed, his car was still in the driveway. I had had enough at that point. I felt scared and betrayed. I knew that I had to act fast, so I quickly called law enforcement. I gave them the rundown of the situation and told them to arrest Carl. I also told them to take Eric from my parents and give him to Blair. The police acted fast and reached my house within five minutes. Staying near a police station was the best decision of my life. I saw them confront my parents and Carl through the CCTV footage. My mom and dad looked panicked as they went in to arrest Carl. Mom called me and said, Taylor, what is wrong with you? Did you call the cops on us? How could you do this? You know Carl could go to jail. He will go to jail, Mom, and you will, too, if you don't leave my house right now. I don't want you and Dad on my property again. I have called Blair. She will come and take Eric. You will never come near us again. How dare you, Taylor? You are a horrible, horrible woman. I wish you were never born. You cannot kick us out and take our grandchildren from us. We won't let that happen. Good luck with that, Mom and Dad. The police will stop and arrest you if you do anything stupid. They know that Eric will go with Blair. You can't do this. We have grandparent rights. We will sue you. Good luck trying to fight me in court. It'll be fun to see the judge react when she realizes that you brought an abusive man into my house to spite a restraining order. You'll be laughed out of court. Before either of my parents could reply, the police came out with handcuffs. Carl was escorted out to the police car and put in the back seat. It gave me relief and satisfaction to see him back with the police. Then the police started to talk to my parents. They were flustered and my dad was starting to shout at the cops. I'm sure they were trying to argue about Eric. Right then, my sister Blair showed up. She showed the cops her ID and took Eric with her. 
My parents tried to stop her, but the police intervened and kept them at bay. Then the cops stayed behind until my parents gathered their stuff and left the premises. My sister locked my house and took the keys for my parents. My parents tried to call me and scream at me about the whole situation. However, I didn't receive their calls. They then started to text me with some weird messages. I recorded all their texts because they were getting really interesting. They said, what you did today wasn't right, Taylor. There will be consequences of this. You have no right to take Eric away from us. Carl, I can't believe you are my daughter. I hate you. You won't be able to keep us at bay, Taylor. You are a working woman. You won't be with Eric all the time. We will get visitation from the court, and then we will take Eric away from you. One CPS call from us can take Eric away from you. If you think you are smart, we are much smarter than you. We will call CPS and tell them some bad stuff. They'll place Eric in our care, and he'll never return to you. That will never happen. Eric will stay with me, and I will do everything in my power to keep him safe. We know where Eric goes to school, Taylor. We know your address. We'll find a way to be with him. You cannot stop us. Yeah, if you act crazy, we will take him away from you. You will never see him again. My parents are stupid. Yes, I can see now that they are horrible people, but they are also very stupid. They still expect that everything will go their way. They had no idea what I was going to do. Only time will show them. He had already made a huge mistake teaming up with my parents. He would suffer as well. I quickly completed all my work and returned home as soon as possible. Blair kept Eric safe, and he was staying at her house until then. Eric was extremely relieved to see me again. He said, Mom, you came back. I thought you won't come back for me. Eric, what are you saying? I went on a business trip. Of course, I was coming back. Dad said you had left me, Mom. He said that he will take me away with him. He showed me pictures of his house and everything. I was scared I didn't want to go with him. Eric, listen to me. I will never let Carl take you or even be near you again. I'm not going anywhere, I promise you, son. I spent a long time consoling Eric and making sure he was okay. Apparently, Carl was talking about me abandoning him and how he was there to take Eric away. I was freaking pissed at Carl. CPS did get involved and heard Eric's account. They recommended therapy and Eric is already going to one. I have also signed up for group therapy for me and Eric. Our therapist is a great woman and really helps us get over our trauma. All the documentation of crimes committed by Carl was used by my lawyer in court. He was charged with attempted kidnapping and violating a restraining order. He's actually looking at jail time. I'm currently in the process of making Carl terminate his rights to Eric. My son deserves a good dad and not an abuser like Carl. My lawyer is very skilled, and we are hoping for a smooth process. As for my parents, they did try to sue me for grandparent rights. The judge took one look at my court history and the texts they sent and dismissed the case. I went a step ahead to get restraining orders against them. The judge approved that straight away. Currently, I have shifted with my son to a different state. I got a promotion at work and took a higher position in a different city. It helped me move away from my parents. Blair does visit me from time to time. She has even cut off contact with our parents and is thinking of moving to my city. My parents are having a hard time with money. Since Blair and I have both stopped helping them out, they were forced to look for extra jobs. Lawyer fees drained their savings and have made them really financially unstable. Meanwhile, my son and I are thriving in this new environment. I have no intention of ever contacting my parents or allowing Carl to traumatize my son again.